Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Hands, some of you are sad that I did not say hands in the previous video, whatever. Uh, before I answer the question that was uh, posted, I want to comment on how providence works. So this story relates to a babysitter of someone I'm related to. Uh, that babysitter is in um, a problematic situation. Uh, somebody uh, has hit a water pipe uh, that uh, uh, provides potable water to her home some months ago. This has caused a leak that has really pumped up her, uh, her uh, utilities bill uh, to such extent that it is very difficult for her family to pay it. It's like three thousand uh, dollars I think at least which is a, an extreme amount of money in Serbia so uh, the person that I'm related to that has this babysitter uh, she consulted her husband and they agreed to pay part of this bill that would uh, allow them to start receiving water again <laughs> so uh, she offered it to this babysitter and she said uh, you know what, while working here, it was such a joy to even listen water on the water tap. And yeah, yes, the babysitter would often actually have showers at my relations house, uh, home in order to, because she couldn't at home. Uh, and uh, I mentioned that to a friend of mine, she lives in Denmark, and she has offered to pay the entire bill. Uh, so I found this uh, very interesting because two people, completely unrelated, except of course by the connection to this babysitter, have come to the same idea and decided to help her out. And I truly believe that God does the same uh, as regards to a lot of other problems in our life. He offers good thoughts through his angels to a plethora of people. And sometimes a lot of people answer to these uh, holy prompts. Sadly, maybe even oftentimes, no one does. Uh, but I have found this extremely inspiring and interesting. So, uh, let, us, uh, let me return to the subject of this video. The question is by Ivan Dinsmore, or Ivan Dinsmore. Why do you stand for prayer? In my church we kneel for prayer. Uh, thank you for your question, uh, Ivan. And uh, this is one of those questions where a lot can be ascertained from the question itself. Okay. Uh, when you go to an Orthodox church or Catholic church, what is the primary thing you do there? You pray. Uh, you will go for the Divine Liturgy or Mass or Vespers, Vigil, Matins, some other service. In the Orthodox Church, the emphasis is not on the sermon. Uh, a sermon may last a minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, rarely above fifteen minutes. And to be quite honest, uh, I do not think I have ever seen a sermon last more than, for example, seven minutes in Serbia. If it lasts longer than 15 minutes, it's called a lecture, and, is, uh, and it is not done within the church proper. It is uh, done in some kind of lecture hall, or parish hall, or some uh, other venue. Uh, I, and by I, uh, uh, I mean Orthodox Christians, uh, one of the very few instances where I uh, can speak for others, um, stand during prayer because that is an ancient posture for prayer. Uh, generally, uh, early Christians prayed in two ways, uh, standing, uh, and it was in all probability combined with orange posture, that is with uh, lifted hands. Of course, you can't see it right now, but uh, I'm lifting my hands. Um, and the other one was kneeling. However, uh, however, this kneeling wasn't done often in the way that uh, Western Christians typically perform it today, that is falling on their knees with their uh, upper body, uh, with their uh, upper body uh, erect, but completely to the ground, you know. 
uh, of course this uh, this was done but it wasn't all that common we can see that uh, from the icons that have been preserved what probable prayer postures were today the orthodox typically uh, typically pray with uh, standing with their head slightly bowed or not if they're like looking at the icons or bowed if they're reading from a prayer book um, and there is a theological reason for this. Uh, we stand during prayer because we pray to the resurrected Christ. Our standing position means that we are made uh, sons and daughters to, uh, through the common body and blood that we share in the Christ our Lord who is the Son of God the Father. And that is why we stand. Of course, we will express repentance, uh, we will uh, confess that we are nothing but dust before Him, and that is why we will kneel, we will prostrate ourselves and so on. Uh, but this was never a primary, uh, a primary mode for prayer. Um, in fact, uh, Church canon law even forbids it uh, from Pascha, that is Easter, uh, until the day of Pentecost, and I believe that it might be even forbidden during Sundays, especially to emphasize just how important resurrection is, because uh, uh, because uh, we are made partakers of God's nature, and because Christ is risen from the dead. Uh, pews uh, in the Orthodox Church uh, aren't that common. Uh, it uh, again. Uh, they, they do exist in, for example, Greek churches and I think maybe Antiochian ones. Uh, but in the West, uh, pews came about for two reasons. Uh, they practically did not exist until like 16th century. And they came for, uh, for different reasons in Protestant and in Catholic churches. For Protestants, they came about because... Um, uh, they came about because... Uh, the emphasis was placed on sermon, and for a sermon, you're a passive participant. You, you sit and you listen. You don't actually engage in the sermon. You absorb it, but that's, uh, that's about it. However, with the, Catholic, uh, with the Catholics, the difference uh, was... Uh, 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 the reason was completely different, and even though uh, Mass is practically all prayer, like the Divine Liturgy, um, the fact remained that uh, for masses, um, the laity was practically completely excluded, uh, which is in stark contrast with the typical divine liturgy. And uh, if you you have seen my video on the Tridentine Mass, uh, maybe not a video on the Tridentine Mass, but it was in one of my Q and A's uh, on the main channel. Uh, I uh, the Tridentine Mass really, really excludes laity from, uh, uh, from, uh, from participating. Of course, people will say, well, we are, you are participating in, uh, in an interior way, that's all nice and dandy, but still that is a sort of, uh, that is a sort of uh, not the point. You're still not participating, and as far, uh, uh, as far as the Mass is concerned, it does not really matter if there are 200 people or even the priest alone. Everything still happens. So, uh, in that atmosphere, uh, where people are simply passive participants to the mystery, uh, that is where you got the pews. Uh, I do not know how pews came about in Greece, to be quite honest. Um, it might be with some fascination with the West, and there was a lot of fascination with the West, uh, the Byzantines really were fascinated with Thomas Aquinas. Um, I know that Russians really admired the, how, uh, the systematics of Catholic theology, and uh, uh, I think that even St. Peter Mogila, for example, flat out introduced the rite of the blessing of icons uh, in his service books uh, because he was like, hey, Catholics have this, why don't we have this? Even though... Uh, the Seventh Ecumenical Council said that the icons aren't blessed precisely because they are holy already. Like, what are you going to bless the icon of Jesus with? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's Jesus Christ. Uh, why do you need to bless him? You know, he's a source of blessing, and so on and so forth. Um, 
in the Orthodox Church there are some prayers that are sort of uh, red sitting. Uh, the primary one that comes to mind is the Psalter. So generally when the Psalter is read, uh, it is read uh, while sitting. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, Orthodox, typical Orthodox book of Psalms, the Psalter, is that, uh, divided in 20 sections called Katismata, which means uh, sitting, that actually that those are prayers that you read while you sit, but you don't have to. For, ex uh, for me personally, I have so grown used to standing during prayer that if I sit during prayer, it's just not the same thing. Um, however, there are, of course, some things where it is emphasized that you should not sit. Uh, for example, the Akatist means actually a hymn that is read or sang while you stand. And of course, even though uh, the Psalms are read while sitting, uh, there are the six uh, Psalms that are read during Matins, which are considered so important that uh, it is mandated that people should stand uh, while they are being read. And in fact, uh, there is a tradition that these six Psalms uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be announced on the day of the resurrection. Uh, I, uh, I hope I have answered your question. So yeah, uh, the, uh, the pews did not exist uh, in the 16th century. Uh, and, uh, and as I m mentioned in the beginning, you said that, uh, uh, you, said that uh, you kneel in your church while you pray. Uh, again, I might be wrong, but uh, I can imagine that the pastor says, let us kneel in prayer, then you kneel for a minute, two, three. Then he says, Amen, or he reads a prayer while, while everyone's uh, kneeling, and then you uh, move on with uh, the sermon, the homily, the testimony, witnessing, uh, the band, whatever, which means, which would probably mean, but it does not have to mean, uh, that uh, the prayer is the primary focus of the service. Of course, you might consider the band playing to be a prayer. I'm on the fence about it. So, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I uh, please apol uh, I apologize for my presumptions, uh, and I hope to see you all in one of the next videos. Bye.